The Nun 2 is the over-the-top and unhinged sequel that we deserve. Hey everyone, my name is Gavin and I love a horror. The Nun Chapter 2 is finally here to continue the long-running Conjuring Universe series, and while most people, including myself, probably had very low expectations going into The Nun Chapter 2 considering how disastrous 2018's The Nun was, I can safely say that our prayers were answered, and The Nun Chapter 2 is a worthy entry into the Conjuring series. Let's get into it. Before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. About to cross the threshold of 4,000 subscribers, which is crazy to me. So thank you so much for all the support. Let's hit 4K, baby. Let's go. Also, mild spoilers for The Nun 2. Nothing too extreme, but there will be uh, some spoilers throughout the review. The Nun Chapter 2 picks up four years after the events of the first film with the demon Valak now fully possessing poor Frenchie Maurice. I guess Sister Irene Tajiri misting the blood of Christ into Valak's face wasn't enough to stop the demon in the first Nun. Possessed Maurice is going around doing all the Valak things like setting a priest on fire and doing all the jump scares, you know the huge. A returning sister Irene is currently stationed in Italy but is quickly set hot on the heels of the demon Valak because the priests are like, hey, you're like the only person left alive who dealt with this, so we're gonna need you to go deal with that again. Kay thinks bye, peace be with you. You also have the new character of Sister Deborah, who exists to be the character that like questions the faith, if it's all worth it, why is she even becoming a nun in the first place, and I mean it's kind of cliche, but I think she does a good job. It's cool to have Sister Irene uh, travel with a quick-witted companion and to bring some much-needed humor to the Nun series. Meanwhile, when not being possessed, Maurice acts as a caretaker at an all-girls boarding school who is a very, he's very nice, he's very kind, he befriends a bullied girl and flirts with her very single mom. Nice. I like the location of the boarding school and I really like Maurice having a relationship outside of just knowing Sister Irene because it made you really feel for the character because he is a very nice guy but he's also possessed by a demon so you know that even though he's nice to this little girl Sophie and he's flirting with her mom, hot, you still know things are gonna go south because he is still possessed by a demon. The quick and dirty of the plot though is that everybody needs to get together to stop the demon Valak from obtaining a very special artifact that will make them powerful and unstoppable. Not the most original plot, but still easy enough to follow and enough to get me invested. One of the main criticisms of the first Nun is that the story is kind of all over the place, hard to follow, and that the movie, at least for me, was very boring. And aside from that dead ringer scene in the graveyard, the nun isn't very memorable, and the 93 minute runtime felt much longer than it actually was. But no need to worry about that this time out, because the nun 2 is the over the top and unhinged sequel that we deserve. You've got priests exploding into fire, you've got demon goats showing up to terrorize children, and you've got a ghost child swinging a priest's incense jar like a flail. That kid kicks ass for the Lord. They definitely learned from the mistakes of the first nun and said, let's make a movie that's fun, spooky, and most of all, very Catholic. Side note, any movie that hires actors to play nuns to promote a movie at a horror convention like this earns my respect. It was awesome. Also, I do want to say that as somebody who went to Catholic school and grew up pretty Catholic. Um, nuns are some of the kindest, sweetest, hardest working people in the entire world. But also, they got rulers and know how to use them, which makes a nun a terrifying villain and also a very sexy Halloween costume. I do want to commend the nun for having some pretty fun jump scares. The Conjuring universe is a haunted house built on jump scares, so it's no surprise that the nun chapter two has an abundance of these types of scares. My favorite jump scare though would have to be the scene when Irene is going down an alley, she comes to a magazine stand, and then the wind starts blowing the magazines around, and then you see like faces, and then all of a sudden, oh no, it's made the shape of the nun. It's in the trailer, so I'm not really spoiling anything, but I thought it was a very fun, creative, and visually interesting way to do a jump scare. And for a Conjuring movie, The Nun Chapter 2 is actually pretty violent and has some actual kills in it. So again, good job. Really, we're really up in the game here for The Conjuring Universe, Nun Chapter 2. You're doing great. With that said, not everything in The Nun Chapter 2 works for me. The idea of Sister Irene's mother's backstory and Sister Irene being like the last of her bloodline or whatever, that that trope, did, didn't really do anything for me and was kind of a little confusing at times. Like, well, so wait, who's, what's going on? Because I mentioned like one character early in the movie and then it becomes relevant later. It's not a twist or anything. It's kind of like, oh, I kind of saw where this was going the whole time. So again, not the most creative way to do it. Also, The Nun Chapter 2 is not the scariest entry in the Conjuring series by far, but for me, 
it was a lot of fun. Like, it's one of those movies that you can, like, put on in the background of a party, and people can, like, stop in and enjoy it and watch it and just have some fun with it. It does have the issue of being a prequel, so I don't know where all of this is going in the long run, because, spoiler, spoiler, they defeat Valak again. What a big spoiler, right? They defeat Valak again, and seemingly, they get Maurice unpossessed by the demon. But we know that in The Conjuring 1, the Warrens have to go and rid him of a demon. So either he has a different demon in him then, or Valak comes back and repossesses him. I just don't know where we're going with this, because we already know where it's going. Even if we defeat Valak in this one, we know Valak shows up in The Conjuring 2, so what are we doing? Also, I love there's a mid credit scene featuring Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga that is just them as the Warrens answering a phone and saying like, hello, father. Yes, we'll get right on it. And I can't tell what they're teasing anymore. Is it something new? Are they referencing the first Conjuring movie? Are we tying it back to that? Is Are they setting up the fourth Conjuring movie? What are they referring to when they answer the phone? I can't tell. All I know is Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga got paid a crap ton of money to answer a phone. Hello, Father. Yes, I would like to make $500,000 for this scene. But overall, I found myself having an absolutely wonderful time watching The Nun Chapter 2, and while it's not going to be anybody's favorite movie in the Conjuring universe, it still is a big step up from the first outing of The Nun. So... Go out, see this, have a good time. If you didn't like the first Nun, I think you'll really enjoy this one because it does correct a lot of the issues with that first movie. You'll have a fun time is what I'm saying. You'll have fun with the Nun. <laughs> Overall, I give the Nun Chapter 2 a solid three and a half out of five. But what did you think? Are you a fan of the Conjuring universe or do you just not get it? Is it not for you? Totally understand if it's not. Let me know also in the comments, what is your favorite Conjuring movie or your favorite Conjuring villain? Let me know. Let's talk about it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Greatly do appreciate it. And leave a like for this video. It all helps me out a ton, so I do appreciate it. Until next time, stay weird.